Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the first Ignite stage show of the day. We are Japan CSO Coalition for 2015, in short, to, uh, JCC 2015. We're a member network of 104 organizations. We're sharing the various perspectives from various people from uh, 311 triple disaster in Japan. Today, we have a university student from Fukushima. And it's quite a rare opportunity for you to listen to their live experiences. Let me introduce you. Uh, we have Ms. Keiko Takahashi, uh, who is, <laughs> welcome, who is from Okumamachi. And our Okumamachi is right where that nuclear power plant accident happened in 2011. She is here to share with you her story, her lessons that she wants you to take back to your countries. So without further ado, welcome. It's been four years since the nuclear disaster. Hello, everyone. My name is Keiko Takahashi. Hello. It's, I'm fourth year student at Fukushima University. I was born and raised in Okuma town in Fukushima prefecture, where the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is located. Having spent 18 years there, I have come to love my town. Have you ever thought of the nuclear disaster? Does your country have a nuclear power plant? Now, I will talk about a valuable lesson I learned from the nuclear disaster. <laughs> Have you ever thought about the nuclear disaster? Yeah. On March 11, 2011, the Great East Japan earthquake occurred. I was at my house, five kilometers away from the nuclear power plant. Fortunately, the tsunami didn't hit my house. But on March 12, the government evacuated citizens outside of Okuma town. I never imagined that the nuclear power plant would explode at that time. However, I put on the mask, caps, and gloves, and I checked evacuation maps in case worse came to worst. My expectations were light. I received the bad news that the nuclear power plant had exp exploded while at my relative's house, located 16 kilometers away from the plant. I still remember how I, how I felt when I saw the footage on the TV screen. I thought, it's over. I can never return there. But on the other hand, there was a part of me that felt like I was just watching a movie. I still cannot accept, accept that fact that I have been unable to return to my house since that fateful day. I was able to evacuate all the way to Yamanashi Prefecture, located near Mount Fuji. I stayed there for one month. The reason why my short was so short is, from the, is that from May, I had to start school at Fukushima University. At that time, Fukushima City also has high radiation levels and it worried me. But due to educational system restrictions, I restrictions, I was unable to change school and I gave up to trying to switch. For the opening ceremony, first day class at Fukushima University, I went wearing a mask, but there weren't many people doing the same. And I received discriminatory comments such as, you are going to contaminate me too? Aren't you lucky to get monetary compensation? 
I'm so sorry for the guy who has to marry you. At Fukushima University, 50% of people are ordinarily from Fukushima Prefecture. Yet, I was so shocked at the low level of knowledge and literacy they had on the topic of radiation and the nuclear disaster. Ironically, the knowledge I had about radiation was taught by TEPCO. They would come to school every year and explain, explain about the radiation. In addition, in every home, there were disaster response items such as evacuation maps and manuals. Therefore, I had a basic knowledge concerning radiation. It's been four years since the disaster. The thing that worried me the most right now is the health of the, those who are the same age as I. Pediatric thyroid cancer and other health problems had been discovered but the federal and prefecture governments say that these are not connected to the disaster. Instead of worrying about whether or not to identify these false problems, I would like them to simply extend their hand to the people who need it the most. These are two things that I'd like to share with you. Number one, these need to be nationwide education on radiation within all of our countries. This is a way to protect us from radiation exposure and will prevent discrimination. Number two, the government has to free, give free medical treatment affected population. We should use a wide definition when we refer to affected population. Have you ever thought about the nuclear disaster? I hope my stories become listened to you and hope the nuclear disaster will never happen again. Thank you. I Thank you, Mr. Takahashi. Ladies and gentlemen, why are we doing this? Why are we communicating this, this, these lessons to you? We've learned a great deal from Chernobyl in 1986. We've learned a great deal from Fukushima in 2011. We don't want that same mistake to happen again. And by sharing these lessons from us, uh, we think it's the only way to prevent future catastrophe, uh, such as what we saw in Fukushima. At JCC 2015, we produced this booklet called 10 Lessons from Fukushima. And these are lessons from residents of Fukushima and those working in Fukushima. We really want you to take this back, especially if your country has a nuclear power plant. There's so many things that you should know. Yeah? We've translated this booklet into English, French, Korean, and Chinese so far. The original document is in Japanese. We will translate into more languages in the future. We also have these booklets in the major group booth, which is right behind you. And the PDF version of these booklets, uh, you can download from fukushimalessons.jp. It's the commitment from civil society in Japan towards a safer world, which we all hope for. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming today. Thank you. We have a few minutes to take your questions. If you have any. Yeah. Yes, sir. You have to speak. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a professor of civil engineering and environmental studies. I come from Jordan, Middle East. And unfortunately, we are building now an experimental reactor at one of the universities in Jordan. Hi which is only eight kilometers away from the Syrian borders, where Daesh is the ISIL, the Islamic State is expanding, and the South Koreans are building the experimental reactor. So we are very worried. 
And we have also a plan to build two more big plants in the middle of the desert where there is no water and the culture of safety in the Arab world is very low. So I think I would like to recommend two more lessons for your presentation in the future. One lesson is to make sure that your plants, your nuclear plants in Japan do not open again because yesterday we visited on a, on a Gawa nuclear power station and they said they have spent already one billion dollars to upgrade the quality of the nuclear plant and and also i want you to look back at the fukushima disaster and see why your government lied to you why your government did not tell you the truth they only gave you iodine tablets one day after the accident and what happened to all the radiation in fukushima we visited Fukushima also two days ago, mm -hmm. and they are just stacking all the radioactive material in bags, and they don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So this is a radiation problem that will not be there like for a tsunami, you can solve the problem in a year or two. It's going to be there for hundreds of years. So if there is a solution, if there is a lesson, stop all your nuclear power and work with us to stop all nuclear power in the world. And thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, I think it's a very good indication that our lessons, your lessons, his lessons, her lessons, that's what we have to bring together mm -hmm. yeah, for future action. And I think this exchange of lessons, like exchange of ideas for future actions need to continue. We should not stop here at WCDR. We need to continue this. So, sir, we look forward to working with you. Thank you for your intervention. Thank you. We have maybe time for one question. One more question. Okay. You have the floor. Uh, I am from Bangladesh. I am also oh, the professor of environmental sciences. In our country, we are going to also develop a nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. And it is in a dense area. And you know the country is well populated. My, uh, what I would like to know that, what would be the community preparedness before constructing a nuclear power plant? If you have any suggestion, please let me know. Community preparedness before constructing or in and around the nuclear power plant area. Thank you, sir. It's a very difficult question. Because there are so many things that, that mm -hmm. the people need to know. Most importantly. Okay. So the, the thing that uh, Ms. Takahashi has suggested from her experience is that please think about what happens if it goes wrong. Now, the risk identification and risk disclosure is must before you build it. Yeah, communities need to understand what they're accepting in their community as risks. Japanese government representative at this WCDR said clearly, Japan is breaking away from safety myth around the nuclear power plant. We would like to applaud that attitude, yeah? But if we are taking that path, we need to communicate the risks openly, transparently, before we install such installations. So risk identification, risk disclosure, is something that uh, we, civil society in Japan, uh, also would like to push for. We believe the time is running out. By I'm sure our exchange and our relationship will continue. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming to our Ignite thank stage. You. Thank you.